Hello and welcome to another TLDR UK video. On Tuesday, the UK hit a grim milestone, with 100,000 people dying of COVID-19 in the country. Following three major waves of the virus and three lockdowns, cases in the country do appear to be dropping, but they're still incredibly high. Despite this drop in cases, hospitalisation has reached an all-time high in the UK, as has the number of people on ventilators and, most tragically, the number of deaths. This grim curve isn't just something observed in the UK though, a country with one of the highest Covid death rates per capita. It's also mirrored around the world too, with countries like Brazil and South Africa both seeing major spikes in recent days. There's another thing that these countries have in common though, all three are known to have unique variants of Covid. Officially, the B117 variation, 501V2 and P1 variants. Despite originating in these countries, it's clear that these variants are spreading around the world, with reports of them in a whole bunch of countries. So, if these new variants are spreading, and it's these new, tougher variants of the virus that we need to defeat going forward, then we ought to be taking a deeper look at them. So together, let's find out what makes them unique, what makes them strong, and what's allowing them to cause major spikes in the countries they're affecting. If you're interested in international stories like this, you should check out the TLDR Global channel. It's our brand new channel where we're putting a whole bunch of international content, explaining everything from civil wars and famine in Ethiopia, to how China's richest man disappeared for three months, or even explaining what global debt really is. Find all of these videos and subscribe to TLDR Global by clicking the link in the description. This is the TLDR UK channel though, so it feels fair to start this video by discussing the UK variant of Covid. Officially, it's known as the B117 variant, but I'll be calling it the UK variant for this video, as I don't think anyone wants to hear me say B117 again and again. It's also worth highlighting that these are variants, not strains. Researchers normally consider it a new strain when the version of the virus is substantially different from the original. For example, the different strains of flu that arrive each year, with each normally requiring different antibodies and vaccines. These variants of COVID-19 aren't thought to differentiate substantially enough from the original G variant to justify calling them strains, so we'll be calling them variants in this video. The UK variant certainly is different from the original though, so let's get into that. The first case of the UK variant was discovered on the 20th of September in Kent, but was only announced publicly in December, ultimately resulting in the government locking down much of the country over Christmas. The hope was that this would prevent those in the southeast from carrying it around the country when visiting friends and family over Christmas. That's because as of mid-December, the variant really was localised in the southeast of England, with two-thirds of all new cases in London being the new variant, compared to only 5% in the northwest. Despite these late attempts to try and suppress the spread of the virus, it's now been able to spread throughout the country and even the world, with the variant found in 55 countries globally as of January 20th. This is pretty worrying, because the new variant is certainly more serious than the original G variant. Initial research found that the UK variant is between 30 and 70% more transmissible than G, which is obviously a big concern, and could lead to significantly more rapid spread, something that looks like it's already happening in the UK, with cases still rising throughout January despite the country being in a full lockdown. The variant is able to be more transmissible because it contains the N501Y mutation, which it's been found makes the virus more able to spread. Ultimately, this is probably why the variant has been more successful at spreading around the world, and why the CDC estimates that it's likely to become the dominant strain in the US by March. In addition to this, there's also some research that indicates that the UK variant might be slightly more deadly than G. But, due to lack of solid research at this point, it's hard to truly judge how true this is, and what impact it might have. The good news is that vaccines still appear to be effective against this new strain of the virus. The main differences in this variant relate to its transmissibility, so there's no reason to suspect that the neutralising antibodies the vaccine helps create won't be effective against the UK variant. In fact, Pfizer and Moderna have both said that their vaccines appear to still be effective against this UK variant. 
So that's what we know at the moment about the UK variant. So what about 501v2, the South African variant? The first known case of this variant was discovered in October, with the government officially announcing it on December 18th, around the same time the UK variant was publicly announced. Also like the UK, the South African variant of COVID contains the N501Y mutation, the mutation that makes the virus more transmissible. While there aren't any clear figures about how much more transmissible this mutation is, it's reasonable to assume the numbers will end up being similar to the UK variant. The South African variant also has two additional mutations though, the most worrying of which is E484K, which is thought to help the virus evade antibodies to some degree. This is likely to change how effectively the body can fight off the virus, how long immunity lasts, and most worryingly, the effectiveness of vaccines. Early research from Pfizer and Moderna shows that vaccines are still effective against this strain, despite the E484K mutation, but the vaccines may be less effective than they were against the initial G virus, with Moderna reporting that the vaccine-elicited antibodies were less effective at neutralising this mutation in a laboratory dish. It's also been suggested by South Africa's health minister that the variant may affect young people more than the G variant did. However, based on current research, it's not totally clear whether young people have a higher propensity to catch it, or if they're just more likely to catch it because of its increased transmissibility. Let's move on to the Brazilian variant of the virus, officially known as the P1 variant. There's actually a few different variants that are said to have emerged from Brazil, but we're going to focus on P1, the variant which has been described as a variant of concern. This variant was first announced in January of this year, when Japanese researchers found it in people who had recently visited Brazil, although it's suspected that it's been around for significantly longer, perhaps even since last summer. Due to the recent announcement of the variant, we don't know quite as much about it as we do the other two. However, we do know that it contains both the N501Y and E48K4 mutations, much like the South African variant, which means that it's likely to be more transmissible and potentially more resistant to antibodies and vaccines. If it is like the South African variant though, which current research findings suggest, it is reasonable to think that while antibodies and vaccines could be slightly less effective against it, they will still work, although maybe not quite as well. There's also concern that because this variant makes a dozen or so changes to the virus's spike protein, the antibodies which have been developed by exposure to the vaccine or the G variant might not recognise this new Brazilian variant, potentially leading to the same people being reinfected. Those are the three main variants we're aware of at the moment. However, that doesn't mean that these are the only variants out there. In fact, it's likely they're not, with other variants like L452R appearing in Denmark and California. It's also no coincidence that all of these variants have been found by larger and richer nations. Fighting COVID is incredibly hard and expensive, so it's often only the more prosperous nations who are properly able to sequence the viruses spreading within their borders. Countries like the UK were able to identify these variants relatively quickly, due to the scale of sequencing and scientific knowledge available in Britain. It's therefore possible that there are other variants somewhere else in the world that are yet to be detected. In fact, it's pretty likely. Ultimately though, we need to pay attention to these variants. Their proliferation and spread could make handling the virus more difficult due to them being more transmissible and even more difficult if vaccines and antibodies end up being less effective against them. Time will tell how impactful these variants end up being, but for the moment, we need to keep following the scientific knowledge we have available to us, as well as following local guidance wherever you are. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when we release more videos like this one. And as I said at the start, if you're interested in global topics, then be sure to subscribe to TLDR Global. The link to that is in the description. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is also in the description.